The new podcast, Rush Limbaugh, the man behind the golden EIV microphone. The incredible story of the life and times of a man who changed the way we think and the way we talk. From his first job to his final broadcast, through testimonials from his peers, his protégés, his family, fans, and those who worked closest with him. And of course, Rush himself in his own words. This is the remarkable life story of a man who changed America from a perspective never heard before. Now on iHeartRadio or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to launch my very first podcast, The Truth, with Lisa Booth, with iHeartRadio and Gingrich 360. The Truth with Lisa Booth is a podcast that rejects groupthink, rejects fake news, and will never bow down to the political correctness poisoning this country from within. If you're ready to step outside of your comfort zone and join me on this wild ride, then buckle up and tune in on March 24th for my very first episode, The Truth with Lisa Booth, every single Wednesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to today's edition of the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show podcast. Welcome in Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show. Appreciate all of you hanging out with us on what is, let's be honest, a holiday for a lot of you. We are working hard here. I hope you guys had a fantastic Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I hope wherever you are across this great nation or around the world, you celebrated the 4th of July to your fullest, maybe a little bit. Maybe a few hangovers out there in the crowd today. Maybe some uh, hangovers that are still being built as you are listening to us today. I am uh, Clay Travis. He is Buck Sexton. You can go follow us on Twitter at Clay Travis at Buck Sexton. And Buck, I was down in Atlanta, which was pretty fantastic. I went to Major League Baseball games on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm still fired up over Major League Baseball's decision to pull the All-Star game out of Atlanta, but it wasn't the Braves' fault. They did not support this in any way. And I got to be honest with you, full stadiums, I almost saw, I don't even recall seeing a mask in the entire three days, really, that I was going uh, to and from the stadium all around the battery in the Atlanta area. It felt like 100% normalcy from a sports perspective. I know you were back in New York City for the holiday. What did the city feel like? And what was your vibe on what I would say is the first holiday that felt like all the way back to March that we haven't been being lectured, oh, this is going to be a super spreader event, wait for two weeks. They even had a barbecue at the White House. Joe Biden was out eating ice cream, which seems to be the only thing that the media will almost cover him doing these days. What was your vibe in New York? Did it feel normal? It felt like the return of freedom at some level. There were lots of folks at restaurants, uh, lots of people um, out and about without masks on. I, I will say now there are only a few places where you really feel those restrictions even still in new york city it's gotten a lot better here you have it in these national ride share apps still so if you take uh, if you take any of those uber lyft any of those taxi drivers interesting i think it's because here in new york there's actually a partition there's always been a partition so they're very uh lax about that for the most part because i see they they don't they don't wear them uh they don't wear masks the same way you'll see uh, others um, and, you know, Uber will actually make you take a photo of yourself to prove you're wearing a mask. If you get if you get hit once for not being a mask wearer, they'll oh make you God. start taking a selfie to prove your mask is on. But but to your your broader point, look, restaurants wide open You know, the weather here was a little eh in New York over the weekend. I know people had better weather in other places or perhaps they had similar situation. But I just say this. We had a we had a fourth of July celebration. Where finally it felt like people could live their lives again. And remember, Biden told us if we were good, if we were good little boys and girls and got to 70 percent vaccination rate, we didn't get to the 70 percent. But I think people are finally now when I say people, I think 80 percent of America is in a much better place about all this stuff. Now, I think about 20 percent of America is is still so traumatized that they're completely unreasonable about the COVID realities. I think it's maybe it's more like ten or fifteen percent, but they're a very vocal ten or fifteen percent. I think that's right. Um, and and I keep waiting. So Nashville had the biggest fireworks display of anywhere in the country on Sunday yesterday, and I looked at the pictures. There was no social distancing. There was no masking. And I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm curious what you think about this, Buck, that it's going to be really hard given where the masses, I think, are going to find themselves very quickly 
to go back to the masking and shutdown universe. My fear is as it gets cold and the fall and the winter emerges, there are going to be some hot spots and the same people who learn that they can have draconian authority over all of us. The, the, the Gavin Newsoms and the Andrew Cuomos of the world may try to rear their ugly head and reclaim control. Do you think that a July 4th, like we just had, and this weekend travel, by the way, it was impossible to drive all over the place because people were out on the roads in massive numbers, flying in big numbers, biggest crowds in airports since March of last year when everything got shut down. Do you feel like big days like this help to fight the battle of we can't ever go back again? Well, can I tell you my Spirit Airlines story? Can I tell oh, everybody yeah, what I happens? I hear all about this. Since, I'm since you were texting about it on Friday. Yes. And, and also, just for everybody, we've, we've got... Member, a uh, member of Congress who didn't want to celebrate the Fourth that Clay and I are going to dive into the anti-Americanism on the left for Fourth of July. We're going to dive into that momentarily, and, and there's a lot of news stories. Big thing, a uh, big uh, kerfuffle. I don't know if that's a technical that's term. That's a perfect out, word. Out of out of thank you. Out of ESPN, yes. we can talk about that in a moment. So we got a bunch of things. We'll get to this hour, but I just I'll give you the abbreviated version. So I'm sitting there. Clay and I had a, had a first two great weeks in Nashville, and everyone's feeling good. We're going off the holiday weekend, and yes. The only flight, because everyone keeps said it's like I don't know, Clay. People send me a text. Do you know that Spirit Airlines is a budget carrier? <laughs> yes, but I'm not. I'm not fancy. I just want to get somewhere where I have to go, and I want to get time. The- you pick. You pick time over flight airline, right? I feel like most people probably do that. Exactly. So, so in this case, I'm I'm flying Spirit once again, and I wasn't even going to name the. Well, I guess I did in the in the Twitter thread that went kind of viral over the weekend. But I'm I'm sitting there. And I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, I'm right next to where the, the airline attendants gather in the front, you know, as they do, and you know, hello, welcome, and hello, how are you, and all that stuff. But instead of that, there's a lot of like, pull your mask up, honey, pull your mask up, honey. To, and I'm not, not to adults. Well, I mean that too, but to small children, so yes. small that at one point the attendant says, "Can you pull your mask up?" And the parent says, "My kid's like not even two yet." And there was kind of a, okay, I guess we'll let that slide. I mean, they're telling basically two-year-olds, and remember, not that their mask is off, pull it up over your nose, because that's really going to save us. So so then we get to, I mean, you, you've seen this when you fly. This is still, uh, airlines is where you deal with this. And I always tell everybody that flying in general is like taking a time warp to the Soviet Union circa 1975 or something. The rules are stupid. We all know the rules are dumb. We have to obey them because otherwise we get into trouble. They know it's dumb. We know they know it's dumb, but yet we still have to do it. So I'm sitting there and the people are people are coming on the plane. And then the woman who has been telling everybody to mask up pulls her mask down for the entirety of the announcements. Now, Clay, I, I am not a master's in public health or a Ph.D. in epidemiology or an M.D., and I accept that. But I am pretty sure that there is no special exception for I want to be able to say something more loudly so the virus is not being expelled. Not that I think the virus is even... They're all... By the way, they're all vaccinated. That actually... I could hear their whole conversation because I was right there. What's wild about this is all of it's a sham, and you hit it correctly, but anybody out there who's got a parent, there have been a few videos go viral of people with two-year-olds and three-year-olds or whatever it is trying to get their kids to wear their masks, and that's virtually impossible. But the moment they said, hey, you can eat or drink on the airplane and pull your mask down, any argument they were making about mask wearing was invalid. And I actually wonder, how much longer are we going to go with what I think is clearly cosmetic theater as it pertains to the airports? Because you know, Buck, you were in Nashville the only place anybody is wearing masks in like the states of Florida, Tennessee, Texas, a lot of the country now is when you go into an airport and when you walk through a terminal. So how long do we keep the cosmetic theater and the charade going? And for everyone who's listening who's in a place where they don't do this or you're not worried about this, understand that as long it's like an infection that hasn't been cleared. I think that's a pretty good analogy here. As long as some of this stuff lingers, it will come back. There will be, whether it's this flu season or, you know, this COVID season, it's combined or the next time until we all understand that this stuff to to borrow from you is just cosmetic. It's just theater. It's theatrics. But but just to finish, you know, it's going to come back. But to finish what happens. So then I'm sitting there. The woman pulls her mask down 
to to do the whole, you know, buckle your seatbelts, which, again, it's the Soviet Union, flying planes, commercial is, you know. And let's just say it's spirit. They're not exactly it's like fly the Fauci skies. You know, they're they're very strict <laughs> and they don't really care. And and I I hear them then have a conversation about how we've got we got noncompliance. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And they have this, and a bunch of them gather, you know, they're the stewardesses or the attendants or whatever the proper nomenclatures. They gather and they say there are three people who are not wearing their masks. And so now the whole, by the way, plane, it's holiday week and plane is absolutely packed. Not, not an empty seat on the whole plane. And there are three people that they say have their masks down below their noses and they've already told them, you know, once or twice or whatever it is. But now we all have to wait there while they go through the removal procedure. They actually removed three people. How I got, old are the people that are getting removed, Buck? They're, they were in their, I'd say their 20s, in their 20s. So were they making a conscious stand here? Like, were they drunk? Like, how would you assess their, like, three of them? I, theoretically, they would want to go to New York, right, for the weekend. Like, what's causing all of this consternation? They had to be told, pull it up over your nose too many times for these attendants liking. Oh, my God. And so then, because I heard the negotiation going on behind me, and they were like, no, 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 we'll wear them, we promise. We pro- like, we're good, we promise. And it was like, sorry, third strike. Now the the air airplane people, not the attendants, they bring on these other people, not police, but like, I don't know what, I, you know, supervisor, security. And then they have to negotiate with them and have to start saying, you either come with us or the police will come and arrest you. So let me go through the whole thing. Delay the flight about 40 minutes. We're all sitting so there. So didn't the girls have to walk off like perp walk yes. style? They took, they took three of them. I, I had photos of the whole thing. They took the three of them off the plane. And then at the jetway, because remember, you have to clear the jetway before they can pull away. They're negotiating about how they want to get back on the plane. So, the, so you got, I don't know, 140 people, give or take. I don't know how many are on this kind of a plane, but let, over 100 people are all sitting there for over 40 minutes because some attendants are annoyed about the lack of perfect mask compliance while they're shouting at us with their masks pulled down about mask compliance. If this wasn't the encapsulation of Fauciite madness, Clay, I don't know what is, but I did make it to New York City in one piece, so I was happy about that. So what do you think, I mean, in all honesty, what happens to those girls? Are they banned from spirit? Are they able to get on a later flight? Like, in theory, I would like to hear their story because they want to go, theoretically, right, to New York City. They're in their 20s. They have virtually no risk. They may be vaccinated for all we know. And the flight attendants just decide you weren't masking appropriately, so we're going to demand that you exit the plane after they've already boarded. They probably have checked bags, Buck. You know, they're already sitting there. What sense does any... It's it's all cosmetic kabuki theater nonsense. I would, I would refuse by nullification of these orders if I work for the airline. Meaning, I, I, I understand people don't want to lose their jobs. I think the sane, honorable thing to do is just... Pretend like you don't see it if someone's mask is down below their nose. Who cares? Stop being crazy, Libs. That's what I want to say to them. Stop being crazy, and people need to non-comply. People in positions of authority with this stuff. You know, yeah, if someone else on the plane is going to complain, you can kind of... But I mean to call the to call in the authorities, it was it was to- total madness, Clay. So to threaten them with arrest, Buck, and also you're a flight attendant. Like, do you think that flight attendants overwhelmingly skew Corona Bro uh, obsessive with mask wearing, or do you think, to your point, they've just been so hammered on this over the past year that it's 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 some sort of drunk power authority that they feel? Because as your point, they all were vaccinated. It's not like they they actually feel at risk. No, I think it's because they are afraid that there'll be complaints made. This is what I've been told by I have airline attendants who, you know, used to listen to me on my previous show and they would write in and say that it's because they're afraid that they will get called out for lack of enforcement. And so if they don't enforce the crazy, then they become the problem and they could have professional sanctions. But look, I, overall, I don't want this to overshadow the fact that I think everybody had a really good free 4th of July weekend. We've made huge progress. We're just not done with the fight, Clay, and you know that. This isn't over. And then there's also people who didn't have a really great 4th of July weekend. Some very prominent folks, uh, elected officials, big newspapers. Let's <laughs> let's address that when we come back. Yes. Um, but, you know, the secret's out for everybody that if you abandon your overpriced wireless carrier and you go to Pure Talk, you're going to get the same coverage 
but at a fraction of the price. In the past year alone, over 20,000 of you, Smart Rush listeners, already made the switch to Pure Talk. So, look, this is nothing but upside. Pure Talk is going to give you that exact coverage. So whatever you're used to right now, you're going to have that, but you're getting great savings and much better customer service, which is why Clay and I both have new iPhones with Pure Talk. We're ready to go. No doubt. And you can get unlimited talk, text, plus six gigs of data, all for just 30 bucks a month from your cell phone. Here's what you need to do right now. Dial pound 250 and say Pure Talk and you'll save 50% off your first month. That's pound 250. Say Pure Talk. You'll have the option to receive a one-time auto-dialed text message from Pure Talk. What happens when you cross a lawyer with an ex-CIA agent? The Clay, Travis, and Buck Sexton Show on the EIB Network. Welcome back to the Clay, Travis, and Buck Sexton Show. I am Buck, here with my man Clay, talking about the weekend. We had a great time. We love America. You love America. You celebrated, we celebrated. That's the way it's supposed to be. And yet, not everybody was really feeling it, so to speak. There, there were some folks out there, some news organizations, members of Congress, pundits, etc., that had issues. Let, let's just start with one here, Clay. Um, 204, this is from NPR. Have we crushed their podcast yet, by the way? Because that's a thing that we have to do. We definitely need to crush their podcast because of this ridiculousness. If you love America, as we continue to celebrate July 5th, you should be subscribing to the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton show and help us kick NPR's ass. And let me just say, if you had any any, any possible qualms about it, you're like, oh, but NPR, I love when they talk about how to make the best <laughs> summer salads or whatever. This is the kind of stuff that NPR puts out over our, for many, their favorite American holiday, right? I mean, some people go Thanksgiving, and I don't want to split our our Thanksgiving peeps from our Fourth of July folks. They're both great holidays, great things going on. Clay, you, you don't wait, you don't have an opinion on this one, right? You you love them both. You love both of your holidays equally. I I try not to make a choice, but I will tell you this, Buck. As you get ready to read, I find myself, and I bet a lot of our listeners do too. Wanting to be more pro-America than even I was before for the people who I feel like are anti-American. Does that make sense? Like, makes- I feel even stronger that I want to wear the most ridiculous pro-America gear imaginable on the 4th and on the 4th weekend. I absolutely agree. 240 years ago today, NPR tweeted, Leaders representing 13 British colonies signed a document to declare independence. It says that all men are created equal. But women, enslaved people, indigenous people, and many others were not held as equal at the time. Okay, NPR, <laughs> we know we know that. We, we, we have studied history. We, we are aware of this. This is the part of it. They go, oh, we're just trying to tell the history. It's like, you know, you, you know, if you got a friend named Bob who maybe drinks a little bit too much, maybe don't show up on Bob's birthday and be like, you know... I know we're supposed to celebrate today, but you're actually an alcoholic who's messed up your life, right? Like, there's there are limits here, I think, to time and place that we should all understand. And in case that one, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say it's the best man and 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 best you know maid of honor speech. You don't air the dirty laundry in the best man and the maid of honor speech. You don't be like, well, remember when they broke up for two months because we went to Vegas and uh, and and Johnny over here made the mistake of hooking up with a cocktail waitress and then it got back. Like, yeah. you don't. That might have happened, and it might be an incredibly awkward part, but you don't share it during the toast. Otherwise, your best man has to stand up and say, "I think what my friend here is trying to say is that love is blind." <laughs> yeah, that's Which, right. What ends Which up is happening? An amazing line. Yes. And as we come back, Cori Bush had one of the worst tweets of all, Buck. And you're going to hit that congresswoman making $175,000. But you guys might have had an amazing July 4th. Or maybe you've had amazing July 4ths past in your life experience. And that is why you need to be hopping in and taking advantage of my friends at Legacy Box. It's wedding season. So much of our great family members are no longer able to be reviewed because they're not digitized, right? Old pictures, old videos. 
go ahead and preserve your family's history and make the smart decision to get hooked up right now with Legacy Box. And they have amazing offers right now. They are offering 40% off to preserve all of your family's memories so your family can celebrate meaningful moments at a fraction of the normal price. All you have to do is go to LegacyBox.com slash Clay to get started today. That's LegacyBox.com slash Clay for 40% off. One more time, LegacyBox.com slash Clay. Do what I do. Choose Legacy Box today. You're listening to Clay Travis and Buck Sexton on the EIB Network. Hey everyone, Lisa Booth here, and I am so excited to let you know that I'm launching a brand new podcast, The Truth, with Lisa Booth starting March 24th. As a former pollster, political advisor, and now a television commentator, I have earned your trust by telling you the truth. And I can make this promise to you right here, right now, I will always give it to you straight. And I guarantee that we're gonna learn something new and we'll also be entertained with each episode. Whether it's just me on air, leaving no stone unturned to get to the bottom of the hottest issues impacting your life, or whether I'm interviewing some of the biggest names out there, I will always think for myself. You should too. Look, you don't always have to agree with me, but if you're tired of being talked down to, this is your podcast. And if you're tired of hearing the same tired talking points and you want some fresh takes, this is also your podcast. If you want to know what's really happening in our country without the spin, without the BS, then this is a podcast for you. Listen to The Truth with Lisa Booth every Wednesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sign up and subscribe today. Have you ever wondered what the media and big tech is hiding from you? Like massive stories that actually affect you in your life that they don't want you to see because they make the left and the Biden administration look bad. Well, now there's a podcast dedicated to exposing all of that each and every day. So download the fastest growing podcast in the conservative movement, the Ben Ferguson Show podcast right now. That's right. You can listen to Ben Ferguson Show podcast on iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts Download it right now. Welcome back to the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show. I'm Buck. Happy July 5th. I hope you enjoyed your 4th of July weekend, Independence Day weekend. The number here, we're going to take some reactions to a pretty straightforward question that Clay posed, an important question, which is, do you feel like you should be even more outward in your patriotism, given that patriotism is... Shows of it, at least, are under assault from the left. It's very obvious that that's happening. I mean, we we have plenty of proof, of evidence, of instances to point to. We mentioned before members of Congress. I mean, here's one. This is on 4th of uh, of July weekend. Cori Bush, member of Congress, writes, when they say that the 4th of July is about American freedom, remember this, the freedom they're referring to is for white people. This land is stolen land, and black people still aren't free. Clay, there's a lot that I would like to say about this, and I know you would too, but I I think we should just start with the the top line here. First of all, to refer to freedom in the present tense as freedom only for white people, she says they're referring to freedom for white people. Um, this This is stunningly... Not just divisive, but it's also just a dumb thing to say. I'm sorry. It's it's just a, a wrong and and nasty thing to inject into American society on Independence Day weekend. It's also, as you mentioned, wildly historically inaccurate. And to me, for a congresswoman to be putting that out, and I feel like we talked about this some, Buck, are we playing into the hands of stupid people by giving them attention? Because the reality is, this is a congresswoman that neither you nor I would be paying attention to, otherwise our audience wouldn't be exposed to her. But look, she makes $175,000 a year as a congresswoman. She is directly profiting off of our tax dollars. That is the exact opposite of a lack of freedom She is so free that she can be elected to the highest body in the land in the House of Representatives, the member of our Congress, and she has the privilege to be able to rip a country in a way that truly unfree countries would never allow, right? You can't do this in China. You can't do this in Iran. 
You can't do this in North Korea. You can't do it in the vast majority, I would say, of countries in the world. And But the historical inaccuracy of it, to your point earlier, uh, and we were making the analogy of if you're doing the best man or the maid of honor speech, our democracy was imperfect at its founding. But the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson ceded a full fruition of democracy in that document itself. Has America always lived up perfectly to the ideals of the Declaration of Independence? No, but we have become a more perfect union every day, every week, and every month, I would say, basically, since July 4th, 1776, which we celebrated yesterday and continue to celebrate with a holiday today. So it's just so transparently troll-worthy but also historically inaccurate that it disgusts me. And I would add that we celebrate the principles of yes. the founding, not the belief in a perfection. No, that's actually not a, That's not something that is out there. No, no one holds that we were a perfect country in 1776, nor are we a perfect country today. So there's the creation of a massive straw man by the left here, the creation of an argument that does not really exist, that's not being said, which reminds me of what's being said about CRT now as well. If you oppose CRT, you oppose the teaching of, of the history of this country that involves slavery and involves the, uh, the mistreatment of Native Americans. You know, that's just not true. That's not the argument. The argument is, should we be teaching racial Marxism to kids in school? By the way, the biggest teachers union in the country, it came out over the weekend, is pushing explicitly for that now they, they will we'll, we'll come to that one later um but i just wanted that to get on everyone's radar that this is now that the crt battle uh there's a reason why they didn't want people paying attention because it's, it's a central issue for the left but clay there was a piece in the new york times that you and i were texting about over the weekend a fourth of july symbol of unity that may no longer unite we're not talking about uncle sam costumes with red white and blue pants we're not talking about you know top hats with the uh, with, with the you know the the flag pattern on them, the flag itself in this New York Times piece they bring up and they did fortunately get trounced for this as they should. But let me just, just a little bit of this piece for everyone to hear. The American flag flies in paint on the south side of Peter Triber's potato truck, a local landmark parked permanently on County Route 48 in Long Island. He thought he was drawing attention to his family's farm until he tried to sell his produce. At a local green market where he sells things like bergamot, honey, and sunflowers, he had trouble striking deals until he said he let his liberal leanings slip out in conversation with a customer. She said, oh, oh, phew, you know, I wasn't so sure about you. I thought you were some flag-waving something or other. End <laughs> quote. Can we just be very clear? And they go through more examples of this. There are now, if you're, a, if you're an MSNBC-wearing, triple-masked, critical race theory loving climate change is going to murder us all in five years leftist you are you are triggered by the american flag that's where we are as a country now and it's a disgrace i think that we have managed to get here and i when i read this piece we were texting about over the weekend in new york times buck saying that that, that basically the american flag has been uh has been considered by a certain group of left wingers, which I think is fairly substantial, 25, 30% of people that I think genuinely hate America. I also read this book. Remember when the New York Times had their editorial? Uh, she went on MSNBC and she said she was really upset on Memorial Day because she went out to Long Island and she saw all the flags and it made her think, oh my God, there's a lot of Trump supporters out here in Long Island. I read this piece as basically a defense of her being triggered by the flag being waved proudly. And and to be honest with you, Buck, my response there, and I'm coming out of, by the way, uh, going to the Atlanta Braves baseball game on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which was bathed in patriotism and United States flags. But I'm more likely now to wear American flag gear and to support America on July 4th in as patriotic of a method and fervor as I possibly could. And I bet... There's a lot of people responding to this America hate by doubling down on America love, right? It's crazy that we're in this position. And you and I both know that when you see a home anywhere in America right now that proudly displays an American flag out front, here's what you know. That, that, that home, whoever the, we, without seeing anything about who lives inside or who they are, 
They're not going to subscribe to the America is an awful country rhetoric we're hearing. They're not going to be super woke. They're not going to be super left. And so what you find is that increasingly fashionable anti-Americanism is entirely a symptom, a problem of the Democrat Party and the left. And they they can't really hide from this now. Find me one Republican of prominent substance with a following over Independence Day weekend. One conservative doesn't even have to be a GOP specific thing who's saying American flags make me uncomfortable. I don't like it's because of our history of genocide and oppression and, and all the rest of it. You won't. This only exists on the left. And the, the, this is why the historian in me, and I say historian in quotation marks, I was a history major, but I am a history nerd, as we've talked about on this show already. I was reading an interesting study, Buck. Do you know what percentage? Th- there is an obsession with slavery in America that I don't think really exists anywhere else in the world on the degree and to the degree it does in America right now, as if the entire American experience is only defined by slavery. I thought this was interesting. Do you know what percentage of slaves, Buck, that came from Africa and became enslaved around the world actually ended up in the United States of America? Like, I I found this to be really fascinating. What percentage of African slaves who were brought uh, to a country or to a part of the world... What percentage of them ended up in America? Do you have any idea? I bet I've never. I mean, it would be. An, I know not. it would be an estimate, and I know what yeah. percentage of of Southerners pre secession actually own slaves. I think that's one thing that people don't tend to know it's, it's either. One in. By the way, that's like two percent. That's right. Two percent. Yeah. One in fifty uh, Southerners had slaves. So what, what's the estimate globally? Four. Four percent of all of the African slave trade ended up in the United States. Yet I bet the way that it's covered a huge percentage of our audience is like almost all of those slaves ended up in America, 4%. If you asked a school age, and I mean somebody who's, let's say, you know, junior high, high school age, why why did we have our first, why did America fight its first foreign war? I can almost guarantee that less than 1%, and I'm talking about kids that, you know, do all their homework and are squared away, less than 1% of them would be able to tell you, we fought our first foreign war, because of the enslavement of Americans by North African Berber Muslim pirates. Very few Not- people know that. Why did we go to the shores of Tripoli? And there's a whole conversation here about the hundreds of years of what was effectively the white slave trade by North African states, which I bring this up and people say that's not. They went as far as Iceland and Ireland grabbing slaves off the coast and then selling them into slavery for, I mean, the, the, we could talk about all over the world slavery practices so every, we're gonna every single person buck sorry to cut you off but every single person in their history has slavery in their history every single one of them and yet we focus on the 80 years from 1783 to 1863 when slavery was was legal in the united states as if it's the sum total of slavery around the world what you got for us we're going to come back in a sec here, and we want to hear from you about are you feeling like you should be more patriotic these days in response to the anti-patriotism? I think we should use that term, Clay. Anti-patriotism of the left. Make sure you go to the website, clanbuck.com for stories that we're posting. And please help us beat those commies at NPR with our podcast, the Clay <laughs> Travis and Buck Sexton Show. You know, Mike Lindell is a great American, a great inventor and CEO, and he has hooked us up. I mean, Clay and I have... My pillows. We've got Giza Dream sheets. We've got the slippers. I mean, you you name it. I'm using their products. And Clay, I know in the Travis household, these are all beloved now. And Mike Lindell is also under assault from the cancel culture left because he stands for his values and he speaks out. So we can get you great products, and you can stick your thumb in the eye of the cancel obsessed left by buying from My Pillow. There's no doubt. I love all this product. I've got it throughout my house on my beds, on my kids' beds. We have got my pillow everywhere. And right now, you can go to mypillow.com and click on the new radio listener specials to check out this low price offer on the Giza Dream Sheets. You will find deep discounts on other my pillow products as well. Enter the promo code Clay and Buck because right now, again, the Giza Dream Sheets, two for one, low price plus free shipping. Promo codes Clay and Buck and all my pillow products come with a 60 day money back guarantee. Again, one more time, enter the promo code Clay and Buck at mypillow.com. And you can also call 
800-792-3269 for these great radio specials. Humbled to walk in the footsteps of a legend, Clay Travis and Buck Sexton on the EIB Network. Welcome back in. Clay Travis, Buck Sexton Show. I am Clay Travis. He is Buck Sexton. We're taking some of your calls, by the way, to finish off the first hour, special July 5th edition of the program, 800-282-2882. We're asking the question, are some of you in the wake of suddenly it being called divisive to be in favor of the American flag and patriotism actually being more outspoken in your patriotism as a result. I know I do feel like that in many ways. Uh, it's crazy to think that you could be rebellious by putting out an American flag, but that's kind of what the New York Times has created in this world right now, Buck. And we're going to go uh, to some of the calls out there. Uh, Stella in Poughkeepsie, New York. Stella, what you got for us? Hi. Yes, I wanted to tell you that absolutely after the New York Times editorial, um, I I am now using a flag in my car. We have it in our home, um, and it's simply because uh, I think we've been conditioned to just uh, let it go uh, and not say anything, and we need to be more visual about things how we feel. Um, and, and that's how we're going to fight back, and especially when something so ridiculous as not wanting the American flag around. Stella, it's this it's is, Buck so, here. Yeah. I just want I just want to know are are you are you comfortable with your friends and neighbors though knowing that you you love America and and like to show patriotism not only on Independence Day weekend but just in general? Mm -hmm. uh, are are you ready to take the heat on loving America? Uh, in all fairness, most uh, I I am in a neighborhood that is very pro-American. There we go. Pro-Trump. That said, uh, yes, I am becoming, rather than to just sit back and say, okay, they have their opinion, I will, um, if, if somebody starts telling me their opinion, they will hear back from my opinion um, in no uncertain terms anymore. Um, only because the American flag is beyond presidency, who's the president, what they're doing. It, it, it should not even be a question. Thank you, Stella. Appreciate you listening. Uh, we got a lot of people who want to weigh in, not surprisingly. Let's go to Jim in Twin Cities, Wisconsin. What you got for us, Jim? Hi, guys. Yeah, I, I live in western Western Wisconsin, but I, live, I work a lot in the Twin Cities in Minnesota, so Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, uh, I'm a Rush Limbaugh baby. you know them 30 years. You guys are doing great. I really appreciate you taking over. And basically what I did last year for my birthday in May of 2020, I was so fed up with what the government was doing, I put a tattoo on my arm that said live free or die on my right forearm. On my left forearm, I'm going to get a we the people tattoo with the Constitution around it. I, I think my and buddy Pete Hegseth over at Fox, I think I think our friend Pete has those same tattoos. By the, Are you aware? He has a we the people tattoo on one arm and a I think live free or die on the other. So you're in good company. I put live free or die on even before Sean Hannity came out with the book. And so that's what I'm doing, and I, I have a flag. I wear hats and T-shirts with flags everywhere. Yes, I've lost family members and I've lost friends because I'm too patriotic. I'm too far right, and I don't understand that. My dad's a Vietnam vet. I don't get I, how can you be too patriotic? I just don't get it. I don't know, especially, uh, amen. you know, what's amazing, Clay, and thank you so much, Jim, is, you know, you'll meet people from other parts of the world. And, look, I, I'm not going to name any countries here, but there are other countries where you'll meet people, and they are so fiercely proud and love and no one ever questions that and we of could course. sit here we could sit here and say well you know you guys have like uh some problems with authoritarianism and you know indoor plumbing or not enough electricity you know we, we could get into some things but no that's not nice because they love their country and that's cool and people should be allowed to love their country you know what i mean but here it's not fashionable if you're a leftist. Not a lot. Well, just think what happened when trump criticized other countries people were like oh you can't say that Remember when he said oh, yeah. the, the, the crap hole countries, basically? Ke By the way, let's get Kevin in D.C. He was on the Washington Mall yesterday uh, for July 4th. you got to be fast with this, Kevin. But what was the vibe like there? Yeah, overall, the vibe was really good. Um, a lot of 
people enjoying the holiday. But um, the one problem I had, there's just some crazy lady running up and down the mall screaming about climate change and how we're all going to die in this country. Sucks. <laughs> um, she, I, I can assure yeah. you she's wrong. <laughs> that, I can, that I can tell you. We're not all going to die from climate change, despite what they're saying. we got to come back and talk about some responses here to the anti-patriotism of the left. Some, uh, some excellent voices weighing in on that. Plus, we want to hear from you. 800-282-2882. That's 800-282-2882. Clay Travis, Buck Sexton Show here. We are just getting started on this wonderful July 5th with all of you. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to Clay Travis and Buck Sexton on the EIB Network. Have you ever wondered what the media and big tech is hiding from you? Like massive stories that actually affect you in your life that they don't want you to see because they make the left and the Biden administration look bad. Well, now there's a podcast dedicated to exposing all of that each and every day. So download the fastest growing podcast in the conservative movement, the Ben Ferguson Show podcast right now. That's right. You can listen to Ben Ferguson Show podcast on iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Download it right now. The new podcast, Rush Limbaugh, the man behind the golden EIB microphone. The incredible story of the life and times of a man who changed the way we think and the way we talk. From his first job to his final broadcast, through testimonials from his peers, his protégés, his family, fans, and those who worked closest with him. And of course, Rush himself in his own words. This is the remarkable life story of a man who changed America from a perspective never heard before. Now on iHeartRadio or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Podcasts, favorite podcasts, favorite podcasts, favorite podcast. Now in the last. Hi everyone. I am so excited to launch my very first podcast, The Truth with Lisa Booth with iHeartRadio and Gingrich 360. The Truth with Lisa Booth is a podcast that rejects group thing, rejects fake news, and will never bow down to the political correctness poisoning this country from within. If you're ready to step outside of your comfort zone and join me on this wild ride, then buckle up and tune in on March 24th for my very first episode. The Truth with Lisa Booth every single Wednesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Have you ever wondered what the media and big tech is hiding from you? Like massive stories that actually affect you in your life that they don't want you to see because they make the left and the Biden administration look bad. Well, now there's a podcast dedicated to exposing all of that each and every day. So download the fastest growing podcast in the conservative movement, the Ben Ferguson Show podcast right now. That's right. You can listen to Ben Ferguson Show podcast on iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Download it right now. Welcome back to the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show. I'm Buck here with my man Clay, and we are talking to you about all the news of the day everything came in over the weekend hope you had a great holiday independence day weekend time with family friends ate some delicious food celebrated some america because that's what we do here want to hear from you about your america celebration 800-282-2882 is the phone line 800-282-2882 and also the website is clayandbuck.com for stories transcripts clips all kinds of clay and buck stuff uh, can be found right there and also make sure you subscribe to the clay and buck podcast the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton show, technically, but we—I I hope we're still at number four. Um, I want to want to beat NPR. Want to beat the New York Times. We've already been talking about how unpatriotic the New York Times is. Clay, what's the update? By the way, I can tell. Whenever I look at Clay and he's got the phone out, and we lose, we lost a spot or two. Oh no! Well, I, I think you know we haven't been on. We're down to number five in news right now. So okay. you know you get a little bit of a bump down. So uh, I hadn't checked it all weekend. Uh, so we are hanging tough inside the top five in news, but we still, I texted you like we had almost caught NPR and I have noticed one of the things that goes on is NPR's show that we're trying to catch comes out early in the morning. So we are like uh, the, the runner that is trying to catch, they get a fast start, right? Because everybody's downloading their show early in the morning and then our show podcast goes up and we try to catch them all throughout the day. And I do think at some point when we pass them, it's going to be like 8 or 9 o'clock at night, right? Because all of our crew then has yeah. the opportunity to download and get our show, which doesn't go up till whatever, 4 o'clock Eastern-ish. And, uh, and, and when know, we do when catch them, can actually get it. when we do catch them, we'll have to, we, we obviously are in celebration. In gratitude 
to, yes, a celebration and gratitude to our 400 plus radio affiliates all across the country, because that is the that is the massive audio army that we bring to this every single day. Now, in the last hour, Clay and I were talking to you a little bit about anti-patriotism from the left, which only really seems to exist on the left. It is a problem of the Democrat Party, of the socialist and even Marxist mindset in America. But it's certainly not everyone on the left, and it's certainly not everyone from any community. In fact, there were some people, I, I want to give some some focus here to those who will speak out uh, in favor of patriotism. I mean, George Foreman, just to give you one example of this, George Foreman tweeted out, for about 54 years, people have asked me not to keep saying I love America. Well, I do, and I'm not ashamed. Don't leave it. Love it. Happy 4th of July. I, to, to me, Clay, it's that, that, that you don't have this from, look, if people don't want to tweet, that's fine. But, but from any athlete, from any you know, famous, incredibly successful, multimillionaire American, that this would not be the sentiment over this weekend is, is in, a, in a sense, I find kind of offensive. I mean, they're allowed. It is America. You can say whatever you want. But I think we all seem to point out people like George Foreman who clearly say, I love America, always have, always will, and that's the way it's going to be. And don't try to tell me what I'm supposed to say. I love it. I agree with him. What I would also say about this, Buck, that is so interesting is it would be one thing if you are a left winger and you are angry about America and therefore you're trying to denigrate the United States flag. What are they so angry about? They somehow managed to get Joe Biden drug across the finish line into office. They have control of the United States Senate right now. Nancy Pelosi is the Speaker of the House. Shouldn't they be celebrating America because their version of the American uh, experience is actually being ratified based on the most recent election? This, to me, is, is the flagrant flaw, I think, of their argument they really can't be satisfied. And this is the one that I think Trump got 100 billion percent right. Do you remember, Buck, when he came out and the Charlottesville protest happened and the, the left-wingers and the media completely, uh, basically sold a false bill of goods to the American people about what Trump said? And in fact, Joe Biden even used Charlottesville as evidence for why he needed to run for president. But they, if you they lied back, about what he said, right? Just so they, they lied about what he said. Yeah. They lied about what he said. And, and a lot of people still believe that lie because they haven't actually gone back and, and, and even paid attention to what was said. So Joe Biden's entire basis for his campaign was founded in a lie. But at least if you were going to be negative about America when Donald Trump was president, even though I don't think that is a legitimate perspective to take, what's ironic here, Buck, is if anything, the people who have a reason to be angry at America right now would be conservatives, right? Because half of America doesn't really believe we had a fair and full election. Uh, you ended up with the situation in Georgia where now you have a 50-50 Senate uh, tiebreaker with Kamala Harris. Nancy Pelosi hung on by her, uh, by, by her fingernails to power as the speaker, if anything. And then we've had all these COVID lockdowns that have been going on for the last year, Buck. If anything, the people who have a reason to be angry at America are Republicans, are conservatives, yet these are the people even having had the slings and arrows of the election fortune go against them who are choosing to embrace America. That, that, there's an irony there, right? Even when things are not going your way, you still leave, love the country. And even when the left-wingers are getting pretty much everything they wanted, they're still angry at the country. When your real goal is power, you'll never have enough. And when you look at the, the left today, the Democrat Party, and what the undergirding ideals may be or what the principles are that they occasionally espouse, they constantly shift, but they change, it really is all just a mechanism, an apparatus for the uh, attainment and utilization of power. That's what motivates Democrats today. That's why they're so comfortable with Fauciism and authoritarianism in, in, in the, in the uh, bureaucracy of the federal government. That's why they're so comfortable with being told what to do. They're obedient. The left likes to be obedient as long as they feel like their people are in power, right? As long as those who share their ideology, then everyone becomes a collectivist and they do as they're told. And so I'm, I bring this up, Clay, because we are the problem. 
right? Half the country remains the problem for them that they don't, they overpromise, and this is always the case about the left. It's true about politicians in general, but the left wildly overpromises what they'll be able to accomplish. And then it always turns into just blaming the half the country that has always said, we're not going to go along with this stuff. Like, we don't believe in the Green New Deal. We didn't then. We don't now. We oppose you. We think this is a bad idea. But even in cases where they get what they want and it fails, and this brings me to defund the police. Now, they didn't get it everywhere, but they have it in enough places where there's a a clear experiment that has been run. And what happens when you defund police? They've gotten it. And, and you, you know what they're saying now? Either the stats are misleading or it's too early to tell or we didn't defund properly. And the craziest of all is that actually they want to fund the, that, that Democrats are the fund the police party. And we'll get more. We'll get more of that later. But they, they always want to have it both ways. And that's something that I think is is a thread that runs through uh, the Democrat approach to to all of these issues. I mean, they'll they'll talk about. The, 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 the fallback when it comes to anti-patriotism from the left is, well, it's America, so you're allowed to say these things. Okay, yeah, you're allowed to say them, but these are the same people, generally speaking, who are very in favor of cancel culture, which they've now renamed accountability culture. So explain <laughs> to me, you know, if you're a professional athlete, you're a movie star, you're a member of Congress, and you take, you know, the the equivalent of America's birthday as an opportunity to spit on America— no accountability culture there? Oh, no, the First Amendment. Yeah, the First Amendment says the government can't lock you up. It doesn't say that we shouldn't vote you out of office or stop buying your products. And this is what I was building on, Buck, and this is one of the things that I worry about, and I think it's a worthy discussion on this day. Trump at Charlottesville said this doesn't stop with Confederate statues because what's really under attack, and I think he's correct about this, is American history itself. And, in fact... And it didn't get as much attention as maybe it should. But the D.C. mayor basically endorsed the idea of tearing down the Washington Monument, Muriel Bowser, also Lincoln Memorial, Jefferson Memorial. Trump talked about this to some extent. And we saw last summer as all of these uh, protests raged, they were pulling down statues of anybody, basically. Ulysses Grant, uh, Abraham Lincoln, defacing everything. And I wonder whether... This has moved on from initially the Confederate flag. Oh, it's completely unacceptable, right? That was the argument that was made. Now we're seeing a pivot. The New York Times is now saying the American flag itself is not acceptable. July 4th is the next target, right? It already is squarely in the sights. This is an unacceptable day because go look at who drafted the Declaration of Independence. Go look at who signed the Constitution there's too many white guys. We can't celebrate something that involves white men. And what would they replace all of this with? There's a, there's a fascinating discussion to be had here as well. On the one hand, we're establishing that they have no limiting principle on this rewriting of history and that it, it'll just keep going and consuming all aspects of our shared Americana because, I mean, if you really want to be super woke, you know, you're going to find that people that you even like in history aren't acceptable until a couple of years ago, right? Because until you're ready to have transgender individuals sharing bathrooms and and doing all the things that the left now demands, there's always basis for cancellation from wokeness. But but even without taking it to that uh, logical extreme, because they always will take it to the extreme, that's what incrementalism and progressivism is all about. What do we replace all this with? What what then becomes our shared American experience. I mean, the constant, uh, the constant gnashing of teeth and and crying and whining about how we were an imperfect country in the past. It's also worth noting that, at a, in essence, this destroys individual accountability and morality because it all becomes collective guilt. And then you have, if everyone is, if everyone is guilty of something that they haven't done, but we're just told that we are, then how do we get beyond that? What are the actions that we're supposed to take? And that's where this all, who do we replace these uh, statues with? Or what ideas even do we replace what we celebrate over Independence Day weekend? And then what are we supposed to do about all of this? What, what is and, to be done? Well, I think one thing that'll start to happen is now that Juneteenth is a national holiday, I think that there are leftists who will say, we're going to celebrate Juneteenth, not July 4th. 
And I think what has to happen with cancel culture, by the way, is you point out that no one historically, even of recent historical vintage, is perfect based on the standards of 21st century America. I'll give you an example. I went to a high school named after Martin Luther King Jr. He had all sorts of awful things to say about gay people. In fact, he said that homosexuality was a psychological illness in a, a written piece giving advice to somebody who was uh, saying that they were uh, they were attracted to the same sex. He said, that's a psychological illness. You should go get treatment. That was not an uncommon position in the 1950s. If any political leader said that today, they would be in danger of cancellation. So what I believe is going to have to happen is if people are intellectually honest, they're going to have to recognize that all of our leaders have feats of clay, that all of them are imperfect because they are humans, and also that all of them are products of the culture in which they lived. And so my fear is that, again, I, I come back to the, the, the point we're talking about to start this hour. If anything, if you were being honest, you have the presidency, you have the House, you have the Senate. Why would you not say America is a glorious place right now, yet the people who are angry are the people in power and the people who are celebrating America are the people who feel like, in many ways, they got screwed in 2020. Because the leftist mindset is that you and I and all of our friends listening right now all across the country are standing in the way of utopia. If only we would cave. If only we would stop whatever opposition we have, then they would achieve the perfect society that the Democrat socialists and the leftists believe they can have. And that's where so they just funnel all the bitterness and the victimology and the nonsense because you're right. A, a well-adjusted person would say we got our way. Shouldn't things be pretty good we now? But if everything that we wanted, maybe I could be a little bit more supportive of America. You can't blame Donald Trump for anything now. I want to bring back uh, in a second here. We'll come back into uh, Representative Byron Donald's a response to that Cory Bush tweet about how, you know, America is racist is the short version. Um, and that's what should be shared over Independence Day week. And we'll get into that and more when we come back here. But, you know, trillions of dollars have been pumped into our economy recently. We've got these unbelievable indicators right now for inflation. And our national debt has gotten to over $28 trillion. All right. Dollars are going to lose value fast. So what can you do to protect your savings and retirement? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I bought real gold and silver to diversify more por uh, my portfolio. And I did this by getting it from the Oxford Gold Group. Not gold and silver stocks. I'm talking about actual, real gold and silver you hold in your hands. I get my gold and silver from the Oxford Gold Group because I trust them. Give them a call right now at 833-404-GOLD. They'll answer all your questions and send you their investment guide. Whether you're looking to have real gold and silver delivered to your home or have it in your IRA or 401k, the Oxford Gold Group can help. Call the Oxford Gold Group today at 833 833- 404 gold call them right now 833-404 gold giving big tech a headache 24 7 join us at clay and buck on twitter facebook and instagram Welcome back in. Clay Travis, Buck Sexton Show. Appreciate all of you rolling through with us, breaking down everything in the world of basically craziness over the course of the weekend uh, that, uh, that was surrounding July 4th. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, we're going to let uh, some of the responses out there, Buck, that we saw rolling into Cori Bush, who is a congresswoman from Missouri, and chose July 4th to, uh, to basically attack America, unfortunately. But there were some good responses here. Uh, let's play seven, Mike. Black people are free in America. That is what has happened since 1865. That is the state of play in 2021 America. So I look at her tweet, I shake my head, I don't agree. And to be truthful, most black people just don't agree with that. And most people don't agree with that. We live in the greatest country in the world. More black people have accomplished and achieved more wealth here in the United States than any other country in the world. We should actually celebrate that and celebrate, uh, frankly, the birth of the greatest nation man's ever known. 
Also, let's go ahead and play number eight here, Buck, because that's also another strong response. I agree with you. I think that they should ask her about what uh, Corey said. They should ask President Biden about what Corey said. You know, I find it interesting that Republicans are always having to answer questions about what one of our members said. They should be having to answer questions about what Corey said yesterday. Everybody knows it is outlandish. It is ridiculous. That tweet just makes no sense at all. It flies in the face of the reality that the vast majority of Americans, frankly, all Americans see every single day. Now, eloquent, well put, well stated. He gets into a couple things here, though. One is when he, first of all, I mean, he just said it so well about the reality of of how successful, you know, black Americans have been. And, and, and anyway, it's just very eloquently put by Byron Donald. But the second point about, I mean, can you imagine if this were, I, I know we always do this thing, can you imagine if this was a Republican? But for a second, if you had a Republican tweet out something that's effectively defamatory about the United States or, you know, that's meant to undermine our sense of the greatness of this country, don't you think the media would ask a Republican president about that? Don't you a think the media would ask? percent, yes. Yeah. Every single time, Buck, anybody says anything, how many people have gotten asked about their opinion on Liz Cheney, even though Liz Cheney doesn't even remotely register here? And here's what I would say, too. To me, this is flagrantly wrong when you look at the larger context, Buck, because people from Africa, Asia, Latin America, all over the world are literally dying to get here. If this country were terribly racist, would everybody be trying to get here so desperately? I think that is an answer everybody's got. We'll come back to more of this in just a moment here. But, you know, I, I want to share with you Will from California, who's been using Relief Factor. He says he's been using it for a year. He suffered from back pain ranging from a dull and aching to debilitating sensation, tried all sorts of treatments, but then he decided to try Relief Factor. And he said it's going to be, he said it's a game changer now. My dad is using Relief Factor to help him on the golf course. My mother recently hurt her back. She was working out. She's now, I just gave her, Clay, over the weekend, Relief Factor to try. My wife's using it, and they are joining hundreds of thousands of people that have ordered Relief Factor, and about 70% go on to order more. Join the more than half a million people and order the three-week quick start for only $19.95. Go to relieffactor.com or call 800 for relief to get the 1995 three-week quick start developed for you. Go to relieffactor.com, 800, the number four, relief, Relief Factor. On the EIB Network. Hey, it's Buck Sexton. If you feel like a lot of the country's gone mad, you got COVID lockdowns and all kinds of crazy Marxist tyranny from the Democrats, you're not alone. In fact, you've got reinforcements at the ready. Join me every day to be a part of a common sense conversation where we fight the madness of the left, speak the truth, and bring together like-minded people. The Buck Sexton Show. You can listen to the Buck Sexton Show podcast every weekday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. A young college grad gunned down while simply walking his dog. A mom, Michelle Parker, vanishes after she drops off her little twins at the babysitter. An Indianapolis mass murder leaves six dead. Nancy Grace here. These are just some of the cases we're investigating on Crime Stories. It's so easy to think it will never happen to you. Never to my family, right? That's not true. It does happen, and we want to help. Every day on Crime Stories, we break down the biggest breaking crime news and try to put the clues together. We speak with family members, reporters, investigators, police, and specialists. Every day is a mission. Every day, a chance to stop crime and to keep one more person safe. Join us. Listen to Crime Stories with Nancy Grace on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Welcome back to the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show. I am Buck. He is Clay. We are breaking down all of the latest uh, for all of you, including this ongoing conversation because it is July 5th. We just had, well, today's the federal holiday, of course. Clay and I are still working, though, because that's how that's how we do. Uh, that's how we get it done. And we have a moment here. We're wondering, why is it that not only do you have uh, you have some some Democrats out there publicly, but a, a lot of public figures and celebrities who clearly think it is advantageous to dump on America over Independence Day weekend, mind you. Why? Why is that something 
that's happening in this country? And also, is there something to be taken from the fact that, you know, we're, we're not allowed to have immigration policies and borders in this country, according to the left. Every other country, France, Japan, you know, find a country. They're allowed to have borders and immigration controls. If you talk about that in America, the left wants you to know you're racist. If you just love your country and don't spend a lot of time criticizing it and undermining it and saying it's a bad place, the left also has a problem with that. Anywhere else, you can, you can be from Albania, Fiji, England, you name it, you know, Thailand, find a country somewhere. <laughs> You're allowed to love your country. You come here and you have tremendous patriotism and love. But, Clay, it is trendy to undermine America, and it's only on one side of the political aisle. Well, not only that, Buck, we got the Olympics coming up. If you say anything critical about other countries, left-wingers come at you and say, oh, that's racist and xenophobic of you, right? So they're they're fine destroying our own country and our values and our institutions. But we talked about this some when the U.S. played Mexico in soccer, which is probably, you know, a big rivalry game, and the U.S. won and Mexican fans were screaming uh, homophobic slurs, like they actually have been suspended, which is an irony because FIFA has given the uh, the World Cup to uh, uh, a, a Middle Eastern country, but that's another story where basically they still behead gay people over there, whatever. But, and then they also were throwing bottles and uh, refuse on our players. If you said anything negative about Mexico, it was like, oh, that's super racist of you. How dare you criticize the Mexican soccer fans, but yet the same people will denigrate America while screaming to the heavens, even though everything has gone their way, which proves the slippery slope argument. You're right, Buck. I think you nailed it. As long as people like you and I exist and all of our listeners out there in the uh, Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show Army, as long as we exist... The left wing can't be happy because what they really crave is authoritarianism, totalitarianism. They don't want anybody to disagree with anything that they say because they're so convinced that they are right, that they are fastly, rapidly advancing towards the same perspectives that the Taliban and uh, Kim Jong-un reflect, which is there's only one opinion that's allowed. Politics is the religion replacement for the left in this country you can see you can feel it. that's why there's a devotion that's why you have people who will march around in the streets and scream about how climate change is an existential threat because they need something to believe in that is existential they need something to believe in i've said many times you know climate change is a religious belief for people who think they're too smart for religion and really the left is a religious belief for people who think that they are above it you know that think that they are uh, they they don't have a need of it. And, and I'll just say, you know, uh, Andrew Breitbart, rest in peace, famously said that politics is downstream of culture. I think that's something that, that conservatism has really had to take to heart and wake up to in recent years. And it's just, what do people say? When, when you ask somebody at a place like Georgetown University, we want you all to hear this. I have a family member who went to Georgetown. I used to live when I was a CIA officer right next to Georgetown. I mean, a block away from the campus. So I, I know that place pretty well. Um, and when you ask college kids at an, at an elite institution uh, that costs something like fifty five or sixty thousand dollars a year right now, you ask them, what do they think about America? You would Are you think- proud to be an American? No. <laughs> I feel embarrassed to be an American every day. I just think that our economy just cares about money and not like Love humans, it. like, yeah, in general. Do you think that America is the greatest country in this world? To be a white person, it's pretty good to live here, but like overall, I don't think it's the greatest country in the world. I would honestly rather kind of live somewhere else. I'd say that it's like the greatest in like the Olympics, go Olympics. Can you name a better country than the United States in your opinion? I'm not sure if I can. I don't think I can. A really tiny European country. Would you be willing to give up your U.S. citizenship? Yeah, it's not that necessary. I mean, I can still take vacations here. Would you say that college has helped shape your perception of being not proud to be an American? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I went to American, which is an extremely like liberal bubble school. So I know it's kind of like lots of liberals just preaching to the choir. But I think I learned a lot that I'm from Georgia and I would have never learned if I had not taken those classes just about the way the justice system works and zoning laws and everything else. So I think college opened my eyes to a lot of these things. Buck, I also went to college in Washington, D.C. I scholarship kid to uh, George Washington University. And 
right now, you know, George Washington is the Colonials, which is because of the Colonial Army, which is kind of a big deal in the revolutionary uh, universe we're in right now. GW students, Buck, are demanding that the word mascot Colonials be removed even though we were fighting. We were the we were the colonized and the colonists were fighting against uh the British. They don't understand that. And and I look at this stuff and I don't know if you agree with me on this or not, but so much of this is about a loss of perspective and a failure to understand the larger landscape of the world. I really do feel the more and more I think about it, I think if every American had to live overseas for a year in a normal country, I mean normal in quotation marks, meaning you're not getting to go to uh, live high end in a, a, in a in a democracy where people are also really wealthy, right? We're not talking yeah, about you can't go to south of France and live in Monaco for a year for this experiment. Yes. But if you had to go to the where the and see the way that the average person lives, the Peace Corps, I think is very ennobling in many ways, honestly, because you give up a year of your life and you get to experience the way the rest of the world lives. You have so much more of an appreciation for what you have. And I, I like to use this stat. India is a rapidly growing democracy, Buck. Our poorest people in America live on a standard of living wealth scale wealthier than the 20% who are the 20% wealthiest in India, right? Our poor people in America are not poor. In fact, they are wealthy relative to overall standards of living in the world as a whole. Yeah, Most but, people don't know that. But relative is the big is the big issue here, right? This is why you have college kids today who are are walking around talking about how America is oppressive and awful and it's so hard and you know and look I'm I'm a gray beard millennial I think I think you just aged out you're you're just beyond millennial is that correct you're like a year out I missed the millennials by a year yeah. uh we, you got kids who are walking around and all they could think about is you know there are Instagram stars who are 25 who are making millions of dollars a year yes. my my point being that everything is going to be relative in in the society you're in for for people's perception of how well off they are that all said there is a lack of context and perspective, and I think you're addressing that and, and pointing this out uh, appropriately with a lot of Americans who, because they don't really have an experience of what it is to be in a country, like, I'm just going to say it, there are countries that are way more racist than America. I, I mean, culturally... Almost every country in the world, Buck, le- is way more racist than America. We're about to have the Olympics in Japan and, and, and later this month. Look at the citizenship requirements to become a citizen in Japan. You basically can't. I mean, they, can't. they don't want anyone to show up who all of a sudden... So that, but that's, this is what I mean. The, the rules are constantly changing and shifting. And and this this Georgetown, Georgetown students... And I just want to point out, it's not... Georgetown's probably, you know, on the, on the 1 to 10 scale, 10 being Wesleyan where they have naked dorms and everyone's doing interpretive dances to, you know, <laughs> post-feminist theory and, you know, whatever... Wesleyan maybe out of 10 and one would be like, um, you know, Hillsdale College in terms of being, you know, conservative. I mean, Georgetown's probably a seven. I don't know. If, you know, It's liberal, but it's not the most liberal of the schools. The point is here, if you went around, you ask an American college kid today, our elite culture, our elite culture is such that they know the, the safer response to do you love this country? Do you think America's amazing is some hand wringing on the one hand on the other oh i don't know i don't you know kind of cringing well i want to make sure everyone knows i'm woke and we confront our past and i'm just gonna say this isn't just a like it's kind of fun to talk about because it's so absurd which is true this has real effects on our culture on our society and on our perception of what america is and should be and that's why i think we're spending so much so much time on it but you know we can come back actually we have some calls that on this particular topic that I, i want us to get to when we come back, and 800-282-2882 is the number. Clay, you got some thoughts on something else. I do. We can't trust big tech. We all know this. Uh, it is a broken system right now, and they are taking advantage of you. doesn't matter what your politics are or who you voted for. Everybody should have the right to express themselves freely. Sadly, the big tech monopoly has instead opted for silencing tactics and censorship to fight back against big tech's control of the internet 
That's why I use ExpressVPN. Ever wondered how free-to-access tech giants make all their money? By tracking your searches, video history, and everything you click on. By building a profile on you and then selling off your sensitive data. When you use ExpressVPN on your computer or your phone, you anonymize much of your online presence by hiding your IP address. That makes your activity more difficult to trace and sell to advertisers. Plus, ExpressVPN encrypts 100% of your network data to protect you from eavesdroppers and cyber criminals. Buck, what do people need to do to get hooked up? Revoke Big Tech's right to your data today. Secure your internet with the VPN I trust for online protection Visit expressvpn.com slash clay and buck. That's expressvpn.com slash clay and buck to get three extra months free with this exclusive link. Go to expressvpn.com slash clay and buck right now to learn more. How's our driving? Call and let us know at 1 800 282 2882. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton on the EIB Network. Welcome back to the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show. I am Buck. He is Clay. We are getting into it. And we want to hear from you. 800-282-2882. Lines lit. Plus, clayandbuck.com is the website. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Buck Sexton. Follow him, Clay Travis, on Twitter and Facebook. And we are going to be talking to you about this ESPN um, mess problem. Discord, Clay. I don't know how to... Best it, 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 To me, it goes to the essence of the challenge of diversity and inclusion because everybody who is woke loves diversity and inclusion, the, the white crew that is woke, unless it's their job that ends up getting challenged, right? Like, no, no, not me. I can't. It's, well, it's this is basically the, the not in my backyard people, right? This is how the left feels about absolutely everything, right? All the policies. It's like the line from a Bastiat in the law that government is the great fiction through which everyone endeavors to live at the expense of everybody else. That's how libs live their lives. It's other people that pay the price in every sense. Eddie in Outer Banks, North Carolina. Let's hear from you, Eddie. What's going on? Uh, well, greetings from the Outer Banks of North Carolina, where even a bad day here is still a pretty good day. Uh, indeed. Uh, secondly, Secondly, gentlemen, it doesn't. It matters not what poll I saw over the weekend that says 40% of modern college day students feel like we need to shred the U.S. Constitution because it was founded by framers, men and women who were racist, slave owners, bigots, and so we now need to put AOC in charge of putting together a new charter, a new system that is mortifyingly scary, gentlemen. What are your thoughts? God bless. I think college kids always believe stupid things. I, I think the difference is they have a lot of stupid leaders in a way that I don't know necessarily existed, by which I mean they take every cue from Twitter, right? Uh, and you may be able to think about this, Buck. I'm 42. You barely got under the under the hurdle as a millennial. I don't remember when I was young there being uh, political leaders like AOC and the squad who advocated for such patently, absurdly ridiculous things and got serious media attention for it. No, the the slope is, in fact, slippery. And it's important for everyone to know that when people refer to a slippery slope fallacy, and I I, I hat tip Naval Ravikant for this, that is the fallacy. (laughs) Slopes are slippery. And, And progressives are doing incrementalism and have gone further left, and we're seeing it. And just look at policy over the last 20 years. You're seeing it, and it's always a function of what they can get away with. And yes, they're saying crazier things in public, things that if they'd even said 10 or 15 years ago would have been repeated. I mean, they're basically an open borders party now, for example. Claire. That's just one. It used to be a bipartisan, the Secure Fence Act of 2006. There were Democrats who were like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's build a fence. People forget about this. John McCain, Mr. Moderate Republican, build the dang fence was the was the line he used in the commercial. I mean, look, we could do this all day with different variations of that, but that's that's absolutely very real. Marty in Kearney, uh, Nebraska, I believe. Marty, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. It's good to hear you guys. You've got a great show going there. Uh, I'm a listener since 1992, and, you know, you guys are talking about all the division in the country, and I think it's because a lot of uh, the last 20 or 30 years they've been 
taught by taught a different history by like Howard Zinn. I remember Rush brought that up not too long ago. Uh, they have a different history, so that's what divides us. It's and, and I, we can't lose this generation. Right. I mean, he he who controls definitely Buck need a shared history, and when we don't have a shared history at all, we don't have a country. Well, this is the problem, and this is why when you start to look at what the long-term ramifications are for the mass indoctrination of America is evil, if America is evil, you have, as a leftist, you really have no allegiance to it other than the force of law and the state. And so then the goal becomes to seize the force of law and the state for your own ends and purposes for, dare I say, fundamental transformation, something that some Democrats have said allowed very prominently in recent years to dramatically change this place, to repudiate the principles of the founders. That is the goal, friends. You know, I'm a, I'm a believer and listen to what your opponents say and take them seriously. This is what they say they want to do. Uh, we have, t- oh, do we have Bernie in uh, Toledo, Ohio? We got a minute here, Bernie. Okay, yeah, I'm a Democrat and um, I fly a flag 24-7, 365 days a year. I have no problem with anybody flying flags, but if you're doing it to get a reaction from people, then you're doing it for the wrong reason. That's not patriotism. And Wait, but how, how does one well, fly a flag for the wrong reason, Bernie? I mean, if someone's flag is outside their house or on a truck, I mean, if, if is a flag on a pickup truck, is that the wrong reason? Um, why do pew sitters go to church and act like Christians when they're not? I don't really. So you don't think I, I think the reason why people who would say like I'll use myself as an example. I was not someone who wanted to have a flag necessarily outside of my house. Any flag, right? Like for my college or anything else. I want to have a flag outside of my house more so now than I ever have in my past. You may be the same in Buck, even though you're living in New York City, because I want to be able to demonstrate that I am proud of my country yeah. and proud. I, to I be have an a American. big American flag displayed in my living room because I don't have outdoor space and I can't yes. hang it out my window from you know many stories up. But we're going to come back to this big ESPN story um, where you got uh, in- diversity and inclusion stuff at the center of it. Plus, maybe we'll have time for some defund the police stuff. That's all coming up on the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton show. You're listening to Clay Travis and Buck Sexton on the EIB Network. Have you ever wondered what the media and big tech is hiding from you? Like massive stories that actually affect you in your life that they don't want you to see because they make the left and the Biden administration look bad. Well, now there's a podcast dedicated to exposing all of that each and every day. So download the fastest growing podcast in the conservative movement, the Ben Ferguson Show podcast right now. That's right. You can listen to Ben Ferguson Show podcast on iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Download it right now. The new podcast, Rush Limbaugh, the man behind the golden EIB microphone. The incredible story of the life and times of a man who changed the way we think and the way we talk. From his first job to his final broadcast, through testimonials from his peers, his protégés, his family, fans, and those who worked closest with him. And of course, Rush himself in his own words. This is the remarkable life story of a man who changed America from a perspective never heard before. Now on iHeartRadio or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Podcasts, favorite podcasts, favorite podcasts. I'm Jack Armstrong. He's Joe Getty. We're the Armstrong and Getty Show. Are you tired of gulping down the lying filth of the mainstream media? Yeah, we are too. We try to tell you the truth every single day. Gulping down lying filth. Wow. Nobody wants to sound dumb. Our goal is to help you not sound dumb. We'll inform you, and it'll be fun at the same time. You have to choose between entertainment and information. Combine them both with the Armstrong and Getty Show. Armstrong and Getty On Demand. Four episodes available every day via the iHeartRadio app or wherever you download your podcasts. I am so excited to launch my first podcast, Luna Talks with Anna Paulina on the Gingrich 360 Network. But let me warn you, this is not a podcast for the faint of heart or easily offended. This is a podcast for those who want to learn, to engage, to be inspired. 
and perhaps most importantly, for those who still believe in the audacious idea known as the American dream. iHeartRadio is number one for podcasts, but don't take our word for it. Listen to Luna Talks with Anna Paulina every Friday on iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back in, Clay Travis, Buck Sexton Show, holiday edition. I know a lot of you are out the day after the 4th of July. Appreciate you hanging out with us. You may be driving somewhere across the country, headed back home. The roadways were packed. We talked about our travels, Buck Sexton's wild experience on Spirit Airlines, trying to get back uh, to New York City over the weekend. I was on the road down in Atlanta, watched the Braves play with my boys on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Massive crowds, great experience, robust 4th of July for some people, even though the New York Times and uh, Congressman Cory Bush, as we've been talking about, did their best to tear down uh, the United States of America, as many of you have gotten used to, sadly. Uh, we've also got a lot of things that we've been getting into over the course of the program, but I want to encourage all of you. I don't know if the commies at NPR work today or not. They may hate America, but I bet they were willing to take a vacation day when they could. Um, and so... Go subscribe to our podcast, uh, Clay and Buck. You can search it out on iTunes. Go give us five stars. We want to catch NPR. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Clay Travis. He's at Buck Sexton. Awful lot of people who hate America but love the holiday, huh, Buck? Indeed. And also check us out on the iHeartRadio app, by the way, for those of you who may be listening there already, because I know you can listen live to the show, but the podcast of the show is there, too. You can always listen on demand on the iHeartRadio app. But yes, Clay, it's it's funny, though, there's about a 100% correlation. If someone in America, if there's an American who it could be said hates America, 100% chance their politics are left of center. It's pretty remarkable <laughs> when you think about it. It is wild that that's where we have found ourselves. And as we talked about in the first hour of the program, the thing that maybe stuns me the most about the anti-American-ism uh, and also the anti-American flag uh, uh, people out there is... If anybody had a reason to be anti-America right now, it would be huge Donald Trump supporters. It would be people who didn't want the Senate to end up being run by Kamala Harris. It would be people who are as adamantly opposed to Nancy Pelosi as any fiber in their being. Yet, even though Democrats have the House, they have the Senate, and they have the White House right now, the people who are the most aggressive about saying America is a great place are the people who are Donald Trump supporters, they're the ones who have a reason to be angry, yet it's the leftists who are angry. Speaking of angry. Well, we don't, we don't get angry about our politics, though, Clay. We're happy warriors. That's how we do it here. That's how we That's do it we on our side. That's what we try to do. I, I, I want the Ronald Reagan vibe. The, what I've always said is there are a lot of people who are good warriors. There are a lot of people who can be happy. But the combination of the two is rare. And if you nail it, and I think Ronald Reagan nailed it back in the day, if you nail it, then you end up as an iconic figure in American history. Very few people can do it. That's what the Republicans need to nail in 2024 with whoever is the nominee because Joe Biden or Kamala Harris are going to get absolutely trounced. I really firmly 100 billion percent believe that uh, if the right nominee happens in 2024. And I think there's probably a trouncing coming in 2022 beforehand, as typically happens with the party out of power regardless. But one of the big stories, Buck, has been all about diversity and inclusion over the past several years. And I want to play a couple of clips. This was a feature story in the New York Times. Let me give a little bit of a background here. Uh, We have reached the NBA Finals. I know a lot of you are not watching uh, the NBA in particular because of the political nature of the league. And by the way, you have millions and millions of compatriots. Uh, The NBA Finals this year may be the least watched of most of our lives. Uh, Last year was the least watched. So regardless, we're going to have the two least viewed NBA Finals in any of our lives uh, before all is said and done. But there is a flare up, a kerfuffle, as you described at Buck Sexton, inside of ESPN. Rachel Nichols, red haired uh, reporter for ESPN, uh, to describe her for some of you who may be familiar with her. She was the host of the NBA Finals show, which airs on ESPN and ABC. Last year, in the bubble, in the midst of Black Lives Matter and all that jazz, the political nature of the NBA, they replaced Rachel Nichols with Maria Taylor, a black woman. 
Rachel Nichols, despite being super woke and the kind of person that lectured all of us about the North Carolina transgender bathroom bill and why it was fantastic that the NBA pulled their all-star game out of Charlotte, which, by the way, set in motion, Buck Sexton, what ended up happening in Atlanta when Major League Baseball followed their lead and pulled the all-star game and put it in Colorado. She was all fine and dandy and woke and hated Trump supporters and everything was uh, hunky-dory in her world until... Suddenly, she was replaced by a black woman. She was quarantining at the time inside of the NBA bubble. She thought she had turned her camera off, Buck Sexton. Unfortunately for her, she was having a conversation with one of LeBron James's top uh, advisors, and this entire conversation was recorded and now was distributed, and the New York Times did an entire feature piece on this uh, yesterday, here is some of that audio play cut one. So they said to me, hey, instead of hosting the NBA Finals, like, what do you do during the silent reporter job for the NBA Finals? Because guess what that would clear the way for? For Maria to do the hosting for them. Yeah. So I have declined. I don't know what their next move is, but they are feeling pressure because of all of that. And, um, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to just, you know, my thing is, like, I, you know, I wish Marie Taylor all the success in the world. She covers football. She covers basketball. If you need her to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your, like, crappy long-time record on diversity, which, by the way, I myself, like, know personally from the female side of it, like, go for it. Just, you know, find it somewhere else. Like, you're not going to find it with me and take my thing away. I just okay. need to, I, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on. Hold on. I hadn't heard that audio until just now. I read the story because you said it to me over the week and we talked about this, but I, I want to do a real-time reaction. I cannot believe, although I can, and we'll talk about why because I understand the reasons, but no person would hear that and say, oh, my gosh. In fact, that she was speaking in a private conversation, and that's the – I mean, to me, you should be able to say what she said in an HR meeting in any Fortune 500 company in America and not get into trouble. We know that's not true. But I'm just saying, was there not a wasn't the whole point of what we saw with the with the BLM movement and the protests and the riots, lots and lots of riots? Wasn't it too peaceful protest? What wasn't it too? Yeah, mostly peaceful when things are burning down and cops are getting hit in the face with bricks. Wasn't it to get corporations and all of America to do more for uh, communities of color? Wasn't the whole point of this to pressure, including the NBA, including every major corporation. But you see, whether it's this issue or it's affirmative action as a function of law, there are people who want the policy, but then insist on us not discussing the reality. You cannot say we want more diversity and inclusion and then comma say, but you're not allowed to say that somebody may have benefited from a diversity and inclusion initiative or that people in general from certain uh, groups and backgrounds may be benefiting from that because that is a mandate to not discuss the very reality of what you are demanding. All right. Now, Buck, you're going to you love that. All right. I want you to hear this other clip. So the person that she is talking to is one of LeBron James's top advisors. So this is super incestuous, right? Because she covers the NBA, and you can't really cover the NBA very fairly when your first thought when you lose something is to call this guy and strategize with him. So I want you also to hear this cut from also their conversation. This guy, LeBron James's advisor, is the one who founded his Get Out and Vote campaign and tried to get felons the right to vote. And if you have to listen carefully, but he says, I'm so over all this BLM and Me Too stuff. And Rachel Nichols laughs, which is evidence of how much BS, even guys who are pretending to be super woke, it's all a show, it's all a sham. I want you to listen to his advice to her and also Tell me you aren't rolling your eyes when he's out there beating the drum on BLM and Me Too when he's like, I'm so over this BLM and Me Too. Here's the second part of this conversation. <laughs> Just so very 
Some of that was a little a little bit hard to make out. So, Clay, yeah. if, I, if I missed anything, let me know. But let's just I, to, to to be very clear here from what you've said right before this soundbite was played that that we are seeing a, a couple things here. One is that you're not allowed there are allowed, there can be demands for diversity, but you cannot speak about how that means that there'll be people who are getting an advantage in the job market or getting further consideration. It has to be kept very general. That's one part of it, right? And that's, as yeah. I said, true of affirmative action as well. Like, if you if you show up on a college campus, you say, oh, it's so, you know, I love all the diversity here. And they say, that's great. And then you say, okay, well, are they changing standards for some people based on SATs and grades? All of a sudden, everyone gets very tense. You're not allowed to talk about that. Okay. And it seems here that what we have are people who are, I, I, look, I, you know these sports folks better than I do in terms of their politics, but... I'm assuming they're probably left of center, or at least they present left of center on this issue. And what we have, once again, is they hold certain beliefs out in public that will be advantageous. And that's effectively, you could call it corporate virtue signaling, right? It's it's good for the corporation. But behind closed doors, they think a lot of this is nonsense BS, too. Am I, am I missing something? No, I, and I'm curious what people think out there listening because there's obviously sports fans who hear this, but to me, this is at the essence, Buck, what you're nailing here. This is about diversity and inclusion, and people oftentimes in the woke media, allies as they're called, are all in favor of the idea of uh, of having diversity and inclusion until suddenly it impacts them. It's the not-in-my-backyard pheno- phenomenon, right? Rachel Nichols is like, hey, you feel like you have an issue with diversity. That's fine. I'm all in favor of it, but you're not taking my thing away. Yeah, she's going fi- to fire a bunch of associate writers for the website and fill that with diversity and inclusion. Don't take my spot as the producer, I mean, as the uh, reporter, right? Yeah, and she also says, Buck, uh, those same people, meaning people who are trying to take her uh, job away, who are like generally white conservative male Trump voters is part of the reason I've had a hard time at ESPN. Rachel Nichols, direct. Wait, 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 hold on. Who are the white? I I, I know something about white conservative male Trump voters here, Clay. Who are the people at ESPN who are making these decisions who are white conservative male Trump voters? Zero, right? This is the thing, Buck. I'm the only person in all of sports media at the time in 2020 who said, hey, I'm voting for Donald Trump. People think that the political media is left-wing biased. The sports media, like it's literally the entire universe, at least publicly, and me. And maybe your buddy Will Kane. Like, there's almost nobody who would be like, hey, you know... Maybe the sports media, the sports, which is based stool, on meritocracy. What about, what about Stool Presidente? Is he is he kind of a is he kind of I a think, populist I think centrist? Portnoy, yeah, I think Portnoy may have voted for Trump. I'm not sure if he publicly endorsed a candidate, but the fact that you can pull out like three people in all of sports and be like, "Hey, these guys were the ones who voted for Donald Trump," like oh, I got, it's crazy. I got nothing after that, by the way. Like that was the one name that came to mind, other than you two. The only person publicly that worked at ESPN, Fox, CBS, or NBC. I'm on daily television. And then said, I'm voting for Donald Trump was me. And so what I think is interesting about this in a, in a big, you know, large-scale discussion is, to your point, Buck, people like things in theory, but when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, they don't want to actually talk about the particulars here. And And to me, Rachel Nichols is a perfect example of this. She's a huge liberal when it doesn't impact her life, 
But as soon as it impacts her life, she's like, oh, wait a minute. What's with this diversity and inclusion uh, BS? Yeah, and I got news for anybody who doesn't already know this, which I think is no one who's listening to the, to us right now. This is what all the libs say behind closed doors. They, they oh, say, amen. They, they, they all are all of a sudden, they sound a lot more like conservatives when it comes to what's going on as it affects their job, their tax rate, their neighborhood, their security, oh, all these things. They have a very different tune than what they say woke uh, for the wokeness in public. But we'll come back to more of this in a second. We'll take your calls, 800-282-2882, 800-282-2882. Did you hear anything in that ESPN audio uh, Clay told me right before we came on here that it was the number one trending story yesterday. Is there anything shocking in any of that? I mean, I, I want to hear from the folks out there, but we, we've also got to remember that we have obligations, folks, to those who serve this great nation, and there's something we can all do about it. That's where the Tunnel to Towers Foundation comes in. They help all of us keep our commitment to never forget. And this year, the foundation is honoring Gold Star and fallen first responder families with young children and catastrophically injured veterans and first responders with 200 mortgage-free homes. Chairman and CEO Frank Siller is paying tribute to the fallen by walking from the Pentagon to Shanksville and then on to Ground Zero. That's more than 500 miles through six states in 42 days, and it's the month of August through 9-11. And Towers of Light Buck are going to shine at the Pentagon and Shanksville, Pennsylvania memorials in remembrance. The names of those we lost to 9-11-related illness are being read aloud at a ceremony on September 12th. And on Veterans Day, the names of those we lost in the war on terror will also be said out loud. Do good and help America to never forget. Donate $11 a month, only $11, that's all it takes, to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. That's T, the number two, T.org. Still making the complex understandable. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton break it down on the EIB Network. Welcome back in, Clay Travis, Buck Sexton Show. I believe sometimes politics can create strange bedfellows. Rachel Nichols was defended by Steven Jackson, who does a podcast called All the Smoke with iHeart. He came out and said this uh, after there was a the controversy that has blown up in such a big way over Rachel Nichols and ESPN. Here is Steven Jackson. Play that cut. How many times we as black people have said that we was qualified? We know we qualified. We know we qualified for the job, but we didn't get it because they gave it to the white person just because he was white. How mad were we? Because they looking out for their own. How mad were we? When you know you deserve the job, and they give it to a white person just because he white. We've been dealing with that our whole life. And that pisses us off. We ain't getting recorded. But we say too behind closed doors. So I get it. I get it why Rachel mad. Rachel ain't never showed me no signs of being racist. But I would be mad too if I worked my whole life for a job. And they gonna give it to a white dude just because Donald Trump in office. Or just because a white kid got killed. And at the time it didn't look better for a white person to have a job. I would be mad too. It's just the facts. I ain't trying to be like, I'm speaking the truth. We rocking with both of them, Maria and Rach, but this is the truth. All right, Clay, we'll come back into this in a second here. But if you're still putting off a mortgage refinance, you need to ask yourself why there is no reason to do that, especially when there are still some loan options with rates in the twos. No doubt, Buck. After all, a lower rate means extra breathing room. You can pay off other bills, put the money in an emergency fund, or even invest it. All much smarter options than wasting it on interest payments. So here's what you need to do. Call American Financing, get a mortgage review free, and see if you can save up to $1,000 a month. No pressure or obligation. If you like what you hear, they'll get you pre-qualified for free, and you may be able to postpone two mortgage payments. So don't put off a refi any longer. Call American Financing at 800-777-8109. That's 800-777-8109. Or visit AmericanFinancing.net. Travis and Buck Sexton on the EIB Network. Have you ever wondered what the media and big tech is hiding from you? Like massive stories that actually affect you in your life that they don't want you to see because they make the left and the Biden administration look bad. Well, now there's a podcast dedicated to exposing all of that each and every day. So download the fastest growing podcast in the conservative movement, the Ben Ferguson Show podcast right now. 
That's right. You can listen to the Ben Ferguson Show podcast on iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Download it right now. A young college grad gunned down while simply walking his dog. A mom, Michelle Parker, vanishes after she drops off her little twins at the babysitter. An Indianapolis mass murder leaves six dead. Nancy Grace here. These are just some of the cases we're investigating on Crime Stories. It's so easy to think it will never happen to you. Never to my family, right? That's not true. It does happen, and we want to help. Every day on Crime Stories, we break down the biggest breaking crime news and try to put the clues together. We speak with family members, reporters, investigators, police, and specialists every day is a mission every day a chance to stop crime and to keep one more person safe join us listen to crime stories with nancy grace on the iheart radio app apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts they want to take down the jefferson memorial they probably don't want to take it down they want to take the statue of thomas jefferson out and replace it with somebody by the way Let me tell you, you're not going to be happy with the person they want to replace him with. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Jefferson is being removed from the Jefferson Memorial and being replaced with the Reverend Al Sharpton. Um, I don't think so. No. Well, nobody would have a problem with that. No, I could name plenty that they want to replace him with, and uh, not good. It's not good. It's not acceptable. Ladies and gentlemen, the Thomas Jefferson Memorial is now going to be replaced by Joe Biden. President Biden is going to replace. Welcome back to the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show. This is Buck. That was Trump. And oh my, there's really nobody out there with the reach, the megaphone, and the sheer fearlessness at least in the political scene the sheer fearlessness to wade into political correctness i mean uh, clay whereas there can be times that people feel like they're walking around a minefield of pc trump is like the mine sweeper he goes he does not care he does not hold back and it's one of the things that, that honestly i miss most about having him out it's good that he's back out there in the national scene and there's no doubt. And look, we're trying to do that and continue to uphold the legacy of Rush Limbaugh in that same respect as robust believers in the First Amendment. You may not agree with us. You may sometimes think we're crazy. But unlike much of the modern media apparatus that is out there, we're not going to run scared from telling you for three hours every day exactly what we believe. And I think to a large extent, that's why Trump cut through so much of the BS that exists in the political universe. And I gave, uh, we just had Steven Jackson, the uh, NBA player's audio, uh, just before we took a quick commercial break there, where he was saying that people say stuff, whether it's black people, white people, that they say stuff behind closed doors about how they feel uh, when it comes to decisions being made for, look, for for reasons that people object to, you know, because you're, you're getting a job because you are, you know, fill in the blank, whatever it may be. Uh, we, we would be much better off in general if liberals and, you know, if, if liberals said in public what they say in private about all these issues. But here, a perfect example of this over the weekend, it came out the 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 demographic that is by far and really the only one that is clearly in favor of defund the police. Well off white liberals, that's it. That's who actually wants defund the police. You the live people who in a, least need the police in the entire world. You live in a $3 million house in Park Slope or a $6 million mansion in the San Francisco Bay Area, and you vote for Pelosi and Biden and, you know, Schumer and whomever, and you think defund the police because, you know, you have your neighborhood watch and you can pay for private security and you have cops that will actually show up in your neighborhood – This is the fundamental problem. The left doesn't want, the elite left in America doesn't want to have to live under the actual consequences they enforce upon all the rest of us. And we see this even in hiring decisions at places like ESPN or, or, you know, positions uh, being moved around within ESPN. Well, I think what's so fascinating about the Rachel Nichols perspective to build on what you said, Buck, is this is not a new position that was being created by diversity and inclusion. This is someone who directly lost her job to someone else 
based on, in her opinion, the race of the person who was replacing her. And she said out loud what is not supposed to be able to be said out loud. And by the way, the other part of this story, Maria Taylor refuses to speak to Rachel Nichols, will not allow her to be on the radio, on the television program that they do where they speak back and forth to each other. I don't know what the fallout is here. Like, let's pretend, Buck, that I always like, I always say one of the best ways to prepare for making difficult decisions, and this goes for anybody out there who's young, let's say you're away on college, let's say you're 20s, your 30s, you're, pl- you're working your way up. Pretend you're the boss. If you are ESPN's leader right now, Jimmy Pitaro, Buck Sexton, what would you do in this scenario? Do you pay the black woman, Maria Taylor, who it seems clear is trying to extort you for more money than she would otherwise make? Do you put Rachel Nichols back in position? Do you try to move on from both of them and just say, hey, let's try to find somebody new? How do you solve this issue because they're trying to brand the president of ESPN, Jimmy Pitaro, as a racist in this story for the New York Times uh, because he hasn't sufficiently responded to this Rachel Nichols audio calling into question Maria Taylor's job. I think what happens here is there's a reliance on the woke insurance policy that places like ESPN think they build up over time from making lots of public pronouncements in favor of BLM and in favor of transgender equality or whatever it may be. So they always expect that they'll have just enough leeway to push forward and move on. And in terms of the actual decision making about these about these reporters, I I honestly I couldn't even begin to tell you which one of them is more or less deserving. it. I honestly couldn't care less. I mean, and I mean this respectfully. I, you couldn't pay me to do sports reporting. Like, I don't care. Like, I would never want to do that for a job. So I understand why it's not something that I'm going to be able to weigh in on. But I would say that you, you also have to always remember that when people demand a certain standard be applied, and in this case, the standard in corporate America is you have to that diversity and inclusion initiatives, which means the elevation of some uh, you know, sexual orientation and and gender and uh, and racial minorities the elevation of those groups as a function of policy, you have to also be willing to discuss the possibility that there are people, individuals, who benefit from that. It is not not possible to have a policy that does not affect individuals when the whole policy is about elevating individuals for these reasons. And this is the cognitive dissonance. This is the disconnect the left has on all these issues of wokeness. Well, and here's the reality. Neither one of these women matter in terms of audience, right? And it would be different if you're talking about Stephen A. Smith or you're talking about Skip Bayless, one of those guys that is being paid tons of money that is the focal point of their show. If either of these women were removed from their programs, I don't think the ratings would change at all, which is why you're now in a battle over women who aren't even differentiators in terms of the overall audience that they produce. And no matter what you choose, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You're either going to be sexist or racist no matter what you do, which is where the logical extension of left-wing arguments leave us. Every single thing is racist or sexist. I think it's time for us to give some uplift here because we're talking we're getting deep into these politically sensitive issues though it's fun to have trump just do what he does throw some haymakers but let's also bring back a a voice here that can shed light on on independence day and the reason to celebrate it for all that's right rush limbaugh back on july 3rd 2019 this goes back i i forget how many years but it's recent like in the last 10 years this is a harvard survey They found that images, patriotic images of, say, the American flag, fireworks, this kind of thing, things, the visual images, the graphics that are associated with patriotism remind people of Republicans. They promote Republican Party values, or in this case, conservative values. That's what this is about. The Democrats know full well when people are exposed to American symbols and patriotic displays and songs, their political leaning moves to the right. Shortly after that study was made known, that's when we became engulfed in this Kaepernick crap. The tearing down of our history 
That's called art and free expression. Had to topple statues, had to get rid of the flag. We now know this thing going on with Nike. This stuff is not accidental. It's stuff is, it, it, it's not just the evolutionary status of the American protest establishment and the dissent movement. It is perfectly strategically targeted. So they get to play politics on the 4th of July and we don't? We want to handcuff ourselves? Okay, okay, right, you're right. We shouldn't politicize the 4th. We have to politicize because these people are politicizing everything. And now we got the media, the Democrats out claiming that the president's politicizing it when the whole existence of this country is a political miracle. And to say that the Independence Day holiday is not what, what I, I think what the Democrats mean by this is it's not the property of one party. Well, then join us. You are the guys abandoning us. You're the guys on the left. You don't want anything to do with a flag. You don't want anything to do with patriotism. You want to sit there and tear it all down. It's exactly what we've seen in the last few days from the left. It's what we've been talking about here. Rush knew, Rush saw it, and he was always fighting against it. We will take your calls here in just a moment. Uh, thank you for being patient with us, lighting up the lines, pretty much the whole show. All the lines are lit, so thank you for that. Uh, remember, clayandbuck.com is the website. Follow me on Twitter, Buck Sexton. Follow Clay, Clay Travis, on Twitter and also Facebook if you're on. Uh, that's a good place for me to post things and communicate with all of you. Same with Clay. Um my home got stolen. I'm holding a copy of the legal title to my home, and here's my signature that says I sold my home, only I didn't. Well, luckily, that's just a demo from Home Title Lock, because if it was real, I would have already lost my home to identity thieves. Here's how cyber criminals get you. The title documents to our homes are kept online. The thief forges your signature on a quick claim deed stating you sold your home, and he's the new owner. Then he takes out loans using your home's equity and leaves you in debt. You know, Clay, I spoke to a notary recently when I was actually purchasing a property. I asked her, I said, how easy is home title theft? She looked at me like, you'd be shocked how simple this is. Yeah, and that's why I have home title lock as well, Buck, because the instant home title lock detects someone tampering with my home's title, they help shut it down. Let's get you protected as well. Go to HomeTitleLock.com and register your address to see if you're already a victim and enter radio for 30 free days of protection. That's promo code radio at hometitlelock.com. Continuing the message, honoring the memory, Clay Travis and Buck Sexton on the EIB Network. Welcome back in, Clay Travis, Buck Sexton Show. We are closing out. The July 5th holiday edition. Hope all of you, whether you're traveling, whether you are chilling out by the pool, barbecuing, whatever you might be doing. I know many of you have this day off. Hope we've entertained you a little bit more than you otherwise would have been. Uh, we're going to react to some of your shows, but uh, some of your calls on the show. But I want to tell you to go sign up for our show podcast in particular. We have 400 plus AM FM stations in all 50 states. We love all of you guys. But we want to catch NPR, and we want to make them miserable. And the only way we can do that is if you guys go subscribe. You can search out my name, Clay Travis. You can search out Buck Sexton on iTunes. Go give us five stars right now. We are the number five podcast in America, and we want to catch NPR, which is the number three podcast in America in the news category. I know we can do it, Buck Sexton. Oh, we can. We absolutely will. Because the fight against the commies is never over, Clay. That's how we roll here. Jerry in Stratford, Connecticut. Jerry, you're on the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show. First time caller, make a double dittos, and it's a real honor for me to be following your, your analysis pre presented by Rush a couple years ago. Uh, I want a quick comment on ESPN and a quick comment on the woke, woke destroyers. On ESPN, for people who are fed up with their racializing everything and ABC who people are fed up with, you know, ABC racializing uh, uh, entertainment as ESPN does at the sports, I would simply remind them that Roseanne Barr wasn't fired by ABC. She was fired by Disney. This is Disney, Disney, Disney. The company that wants you to spend $1,500 a day when you visit, the company that wants you to spend $300 a month for their live streaming services, it's Disney that insults you. And, and so just remember that when, when, you know, they never pull off anybody on the left for being an idiot. Right. So it's Disney doing this to your country and your culture. Regarding well said. The, the woke, 
the, regarding the woke mob, it, we, yes, we all recognize that our forefathers and foremothers were great people, but they weren't saints. We know that, that they, they had flaws in them, but they accomplished great things. But what I want to focus on is the people who hate them, who criticize them, the iconoclasts that want to destroy statues. They've done nothing in their lives of merit. They've done nothing to say, I have a body of, of work and of merit that allows me to be critical of the past. It, it, it's the exact opposite. It's like they are the, uh, they're, they're the stains on the fabric of American life. They represent all that is bad and nothing that is good. And so when we hear the people screaming, oh, get rid of Thomas Jefferson, get rid of George Washington, you have to remember, the people screaming it haven't done a damn thing for anyone else in their families, in their communities, around the world. They haven't fed a child. They haven't built a hospital. They've done nothing. They're literally the worst of the worst. Jerry, i got to say, I think that what we do see are that the people that are the most, the most woke, the most left-wing and, and radical in their politics – and I, look, I'm not a psychologist, nor do I play one on radio, but they're very unhappy. I will oh, like, the people who wanted, you know, who are always focused on tearing down, whether it's Thomas Jefferson or, as we talked about last week, the conquistador Juan de Oñate in New Mexico. I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing it properly. Um, they're they're unhappy, miserable folks, and that's because I look. I think leftism is ultimately uh, a series of emotions that emanate out from emptiness. But that's just my that's just my take. Uh, I think you're right. I think you hit on it when you said that that they, wokeism has replaced religion in the far left wing. Oh, yeah. It is their religion. It They're is their genuflecting religion. at the altar of wokeism. Sharon in Seattle, Washington. Sharon, welcome. <laughs> Hello and good day. I want to start by saying I think you guys are doing a great job, and you're picking up where Rush left off, and I am one of many who are grateful for that. And so I've already gone to your podcast, giving you five stars. I hope you beat NPR, too. Um, Thank you. I was just yeah, – yeah, you're welcome. Um, I was listening to the clip about – I think it was Stephen Jackson who was responding to the Rachel situation. Yes. And the comment that he made, like – yeah, we all hate it when we're passed up for a job that we're fully qualified. And he went over and over again how he's fully qualified jobs. But I think it's kind of a fundamentally wrong assumption that you think you're fully qualified for a job and got passed up because we all go in interviews not knowing exactly what the boss wants and not knowing exactly what is expected. But you answer questions and you make this interview. I just think it's a bad assumption to think I was fully qualified for this and got passed up for any reason. Sharon, this is an excellent, an excellent point because you don't actually know. A lot of people make assumptions about this stuff. I've been, I've been rejected in my life for tons of jobs, jobs I didn't even want that I've gone in an interview for, and I've never really <laughs> known. Maybe they didn't like my swoop of hair. You know, who knows, right? There's a lot of things you just don't know. But people will make assumptions about this, and there's something else we always have to remind, uh, remind ourselves of. It's definitely true in media, and I think it's true in most jobs that are competitive. There are a lot of good options. It's subjective at some level, and you're always replaceable. That's right. And that's why, honestly, it's frustrating that these kind of conversations come out of sports, Buck, because sports is the ultimate meritocracy. You can te tell whether somebody's good or not on the field, on the court. And so the arguments that spiral out of sports that are so woke are particularly frustrating because anybody can tell who the better athlete is. I want everyone to do something right now. We've got some end-of-day homework for you. Besides subscribing to the Clay Travis and Buck Section Show podcast, which you can listen to on the iHeart app or wherever you get your podcast, the Apple Store, go have some fun. If you got the day off or if you're just going to be finishing up work or perhaps you're listening to this, you got a few hours left, go out tonight, wave that American flag, drink some beer, whatever your preferred beverage may be, and just enjoy the fact that you're American, we're Americans, the greatest country in the history of the world, and Clay and I will be back with you tomorrow. You're listening to Clay Travis and Buck Sexton on the EIB Network. Hi. 
Hi, everyone. I am so excited to launch my very first podcast, The Truth, with Lisa Booth, with iHeartRadio and Gingrich 360. The Truth with Lisa Booth is a podcast that rejects group think, rejects fake news, and will never bow down to the political correctness poisoning this country from within. If you're ready to step outside of your comfort zone and join me on this wild ride, then buckle up and tune in on March 24th for my very first episode. The Truth with Lisa Booth every single Wednesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Have you ever wondered what the media and big tech is hiding from you? Like massive stories that actually affect you in your life that they don't want you to see because they make the left and the Biden administration look bad. Well, now there's a podcast dedicated to exposing all of that each and every day. So download the fastest growing podcast in the conservative movement, the Ben Ferguson Show podcast right now. That's right. You can listen to Ben Ferguson Show podcast on iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Download it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now.